and I get to the door and she's immediately stepped in one of the larger pieces. I was working at a uh, t uh, tire repair shop that um, does not have tire in the name of the, of the title of the shop, uh, but is a national chain. And I was a uh, manager in training, and my boss that day had given me the green light to close the shop that night with me and one other technician. So it was just me working the front shop and um, the technician who was in the back, and his name was Jason. He becomes important later in the story. And we had a national account with a rental car company, and this rental car company would send us probably eight to ten cars per day to do some work they would send over these drivers and the, they would always be drivers who you know couldn't find employment elsewhere so this would be their only uh, you know viable job and a lot of them were retirees who were just needed something to do during the day and then and one day I'm sitting in the shop it's late at night they usually they would uh, drop off a car pick up the keys for another car and then just drive to the airport we were very close to the airport a car rolls in it's an older gentleman who uh, has never been really very nice to me he doesn't say hi he's kind of grumpy he's just kind of not very nice person so I just put the keys on the counter do our regular thing he picks up the keys and goes that's the normal exchange today he pulls up to our front door door flies open he is beelining it with that straight up kind of like quick shuffle like this to the bathroom, which is right in front of me. And I thought, okay, that's odd. That's unusual, especially for him. He doesn't move very, he's not very spry. 20 minutes go by, I don't really think much of it. 25 minutes later, 30 minutes, and I'm starting to get a little concerned. And I look over the counter, because I start to smell something funny. <laughs> it's not something smells like a, something bad. I look over the counter. And there is a line of turds from the front door in little tiny drops, and small, bigger ones too, all the way to the bathroom. And I start to piece it together that this guy had pooped his way to the bathroom. And he's still in the bathroom. I, I don't know what to do. Like the, nothing in my manager's training has ever prepared me for somebody to pooping on my floor. So. Uh, I go and get Jason, okay? Jason is my technician. And Jason is a severe germaphobe, which is an odd combination for a technician who deals with oil and uh, you know, dirty cars all day, especially where we live, a lot of rust. Dirty cars are part of the, part of the deal. And so he's, he's, very, he's very much a germaphobe. He uh, is constantly thinking he's, he's sick with something. He's the kind of guy that if you go out to Subway and bring back three or four and somebody just kind of lifts the flap to see if it's his sandwich, he won't eat it. he take it back. It's not, it's not worth it. It's not his. So I say, Jason, um, one, of the, one of the drivers took a, took a dump on the floor. It, he goes, no way, not possible. So he, go, he goes and looks and he, he verifies the trail of, of turds. And... <laughs> The, the look of horrif horrification is the best word I can come up with. I'm sure I made that word up, but just completely horrified at this site. And thankfully there was a glass wall between us because you could see the technician place from the customer area. And the look of just horror on his face, I will never forget as he turns around. As I'm like, I'm Jason, I'm not lying to you. This is a, this is a real thing. This really did happen. And he immediately makes a beeline for the bathroom. I'm sure he heaved or threw up or something. Uh, but here I am left with a conundrum of what to do. Meanwhile, as I'm on this side of the glass, a customer comes up to pick up her car. A uh, younger gal, attractive, uh, you know, early 20s female in flip-flops. And immediately I make a beeline for the door to let her know that, hey, there's a road hazard here. We need to pay attention. And I get to the door and she's immediately stepped in one of the larger pieces and has gotten a fair amount of it wedged in between her flip-flop and toe area. Again, they don't 
train you for this sort of thing at manager training school. And I immediately apologized and said, I'm really sorry, this is, this is really not, um, you know, how we do business around here and, uh, you know, can I get you a towel? Can I, you know, can I get some disinfectant, bleach, whatever you need? And it didn't dawn on me until many years later that she probably assumed it was uh, dogs, not uh, an elderly gentleman in a rental car. And she brushed it off. She says, you know what? I'm a nurse. It's no big deal. I am in instantly just whew, one of those, uh, you know, I dodged a bullet there because I'm about to be fired moments. The guy is still in the bathroom. I can hear him moving around at that point, And I'm not willing to go in there by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, I get her taken care of and she takes her car and she drives away. And I go out uh, to the main area and we don't have any cleaning supplies. We're not a cleaning shop. So I grab the closest thing I have, which is brake clean and start going to town on the linoleum floor. Well, brake clean's not meant for human excrement. It is not made for that. And really all it did was just more really smear it around than anything. And as I'm on my hands and knees, okay, so I'm on my hands and knees doing my thing, right? He comes out of the bathroom and I still to this day can see his face and he's just, you know, he's a grumpy old man and he comes out of, out of the door. He looks at me, he's looking down at me at this point and I'm scrubbing his business off the linoleum and I give him a look like, yeah. He looks down at me and kind of goes, huh, and then walks off like nothing ever happened. I, at that point, lose any composure that I had. He is now gone, thankfully, otherwise I would have taken it out on him. And, um, you know, discretion being the better part of uh, valor, um, called his boss and, and uh, had explained the situation. He said, there's no possible way that that happened. Really, he didn't, whatever. I said, no, I watched him walk by with a giant um, situation on the backside of his pants that he uh, tried for probably 40 minutes to, to take care of. And I went to the car. It dawned on me that the, his car was still there. The car that he brought was still there. I went out to the car, had the key, opened the door, and the driver's seat is completely destroyed. I will leave your imagination up to what happened uh, to that chair. Uh, however, I called the guy's boss back and said, look, I, there's biohazard here. I'm not going to subject my technician. Remember, Jason, the one who, uh, any germ at all, and he will flee. I said, there's not enough seat covers in this place to, <laughs> to make Jason comfortable with this. And you're just going to have to take it somewhere else because I'm not going to deal with it. We're about to, you know, we're getting close to closing time and I realize that I have not checked the bathroom where he was for a significant period of time. It was a very small room, maybe, you know, six by six, single stall bathroom, no big deal. And I get in there and I am instantly, it's like if you've ever been hit in the face with a sack full of oranges, the smell was that potent. Just literally, bam, right in the face as I open the door. I look, there is a pair of uh, used under undergarments in the in the trash and an overwhelming reek of uh, person's business and that is uh, the last straw that was the last straw I had I had cleaned up the floor at that point and the bathroom was I, there's no way I could have approached it I then uh, propped the door left a note for my boss saying super sorry the bathroom is horrible I will tell you in the morning I'm going to have several beers right now and locked the door and went home. <laughs> and the next morning, my boss came in and said, yep, we found the remnants in the bathroom and uh, there were more than just what was there. But yeah, that's, that's what happened. Jason made it, he lived. <laughs> I, uh, and I, uh, I, I, what was the line? I went over to a friend's house that night and we were all, all of us, probably seven or eight of us, sitting around watching Lost. This is to give you the time frame, okay? One of the original seasons of Lost. And I had a six pack of beer in front of me. I said, no, I'm not sharing. And opened the first one. I said, just be thankful I didn't crap on your floor. <laughs> Start the show. <laughs>